Good morning, New Eden. Today is October 1st, 2023, and this is the Federation Frontline Report. My name is Frozen Fallout. I'll be your host today, and we've got a very special interview. We are with 5348008, otherwise known as Leo. Welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me. Yeah, no, it's uh, it was you know definitely awesome of you to come over to the the enemy station here over in Haydeli. We got special uh, docking permissions for you, and uh, awesome to have you. So tell us, um, you know, who you fly for right now, and what are you what are you up to in Eve Online? Uh, well. I'm currently in the Gingerbread Spacemen Corporation. I'm uh, directly enlisted into Kodari Militia. Um, Gingerbread Spacemen is part of uh, the iBlue Alliance, which is Sister of Lion. It's to iRed, which is uh, headed by John Revenant. Um, we're kind of a theater, theater that kind of NPC like ratting uh, side. Uh, we live primarily in Syndicate Nolsec, which is a uh, Pirate faction, uh, Nolsec with the Sanchez. No, not Sanchez. The Serpentis. Um, I, yeah. I mean, I fly with um, a couple people. Like, I, I, I've been kind of leaning towards like Nolsec PVP a lot more recently. So I've been flying with some of my court mates. Uh, but every now and again, I pop back into faction warfare space just to reminisce, I guess. <laughs> uh, have fun, chase uh, chase the farmers, get chased by yeah. the blobs. I see you do, you know, a lot of uh, solo PvP out there. Um, we've we've had our, our scuffles uh, as of late, uh, which have been yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, but I think we'll we'll get into that a little bit more later uh, because I'd like to start out by just taking us into the way back machine here. Um, so if you could just go ahead, and step right up, and take me back to. How the fuck did you learn about EVE Online, and when was that? Um, I started playing the game uh, a very, I don't even remember how long, like like six years ago or so. Um, I was introduced to it by a friend of mine. Uh, I, it was like, I didn't even know what was really going on. I think I did some like high sec like missions or something like that. I didn't really have a much of a grasp of what like eve online really was and the the um, tutorial back then was uh not quite just kick you out into eve and like no and, like, well, figure it out they give you a little bit of guidance but i mean yeah, not they, much they, they give you, not much they give you a little bit they give you a little bit um so yeah i stopped a lot playing better for a these couple days, of, so. yeah it's yeah there's a whole new like i didn't even know there's like a whole new cinematic thing that's really mm -hmm. cool um yeah, so I stopped a lot playing. of stations getting blown up for some reason. Yep. Every time that somebody logs into the game, it's like, yep, another station was blown up today. <laughs> so yeah, I, I played for like a week or so and then stopped for a while. And then I actually played Eve Dust on the PS3. Oh, cool. Yeah, I played that. That was a yeah. lot of fun. Um, are you excited uh, about the, the revival of that with uh, Vanguard? Will it, yeah, will it be like kind of a... Like, will it be similar to Eve Dust, or will it be kind of a whole new thing? I thought it was more centered towards, like, you know, Zarzak and all that. Um, so, yeah, it, well, I mean, like, the storyline is not going to be the same thing. So it's definitely not, like, troops that are taking over a planet type kind of uh, faction war direct tie into faction warfare. Um, it sounds like this is more going to be tied into, you know, the Deathless and everything that's going on with that. However, okay. there will be connections to eve i mean obviously there's going to be if you have the account in eve you have a vanguard account if you have a vanguard account you have an eve online account so your 20 dollars a month is now doing or less depending on how long you sign up for and what deals you find but that 20 dollars is two games in one now so oh, that's, cool. that's that's a big change um it's also going to be on the ps2 and uh, they, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be. Yes, too. <laughs> no, I, I said that if if they were gonna announce that this was gonna be a PS5 or whatever game, that I was that literally be... gonna walk out 
and just be like, yeah. nope, um, never, you know, this is like, I've lost all faith in you, CCP. I don't care how awesome you've been doing recently with Faction Warfare. I'm fucking done. Um, yeah, that would that would be something. But no, it's it's a PC game from my understanding. Um, but it's going to be different in a lot of different areas. Like, for example, it's supposed to be like a PvE, PvP, first-person right. shooter. So there's like going to be NPCs for you to fight. Um, and it's going to be centered around like finding loot, you know, like on planets, like special things on on the planet and getting to it before other people do um like these crash wreck sites um and that one of the tie-ins to eve is that like you know a spaceship that's blown up outside of like a planet or something like that can rain its loot down onto the ground and the, the player can kind of go around and, and collect that stuff up so you know wow. some of that destroyed loot or uh will be not quite destroyed it'll be falling on the planets type kind of thing wow. i don't know yeah, how they're gonna exactly tie that in because we don't fight wonder... planets very much but <laughs> yeah i mean because the planetary interaction system i don't think has seen much love in a while i wonder if they're gonna update that for mm. um, sarzak if they're gonna add um Ooh, maybe, maybe... You can attack other people's planets or something that would be pretty sick yeah, they haven't come up with, uh, or, like, give, given any detail that, that even in the uh, panels and stuff like that, I didn't hear anything about exactly what you're going to be doing. Um, but, uh, you know, it's going to be related definitely, like, to the Deathless and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, in any case, so you got, uh, so you dropped out of EVE, you jumped into Dust 514. Um, how'd that go for you? What was uh, Dust 514 like for you? Uh, yeah, it was, it was a really fun game. Um, I was pretty sad when it got shut down because I was I was having a lot of fun. Anyways, I think I I don't really remember exactly how it how it worked, but I'm pretty sure I was just shooting like grenades at people or something. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Just having you know good old time doing a first person shooter for a very short amount of time. Even if you got in at the very beginning, it was um, you know not the lifespan that we had all hoped for so that's kind of sad so after the shutdowns you you get the itch to come back or were you doing bombardment at all during that time were you no i was not i was not playing eve at all it was all it was all dust i i didn't even know that that was a thing i heard about that actually pretty recently that there was an actual connection between eve dust and eve online um but yeah after eve dust went down i just i stopped like play anything for a while longer and then i think maybe like two years later i this random video popped up um from a guy called friendly targets he was flying a stabber around and killing things and um it looked like a lot of fun so i made a new character um i think it was yeah it was a minimatar pilot i forget what his name is now it was like egar egar or something uh, I made a new pilot, put him into Minmatar Militia, and then just started flying like rifters around and stuff, and basically just figuring out the game from like videos and trial and error, basically. I didn't really join any corps or anything, um, which now I feel like was kind of a, kind of a mistake. Um, yeah, it's uh, one of the first mistakes that a lot of people do. Um, I got lucky enough um, where... I had a band of friends that were playing, so they had made their own corporation, so I kind of got into, like, right away, it was like, I was shoved right into, like, okay, we're gonna be, like, there was, like, six of us that were, like, playing the game at the time, so it was like, we're gonna make our own corporation, we're gonna try and learn how to play this game, um, back in 2000, they started in 2005, I played in 2005, me and my buddy played back in, like, a little bit in 2003 as in like two days where i was like this is cool what the fuck is this game because they literally just were like kick you out here's a ship go fucking mine some rock if you want to maybe get some going or like find some npc that you might be able to kill in the beta <laughs> you were like really no there was it feels like you're being handheld now and you're barely being handheld now so in, in reality but yeah i have not i did not play the game first came out not that much there's plenty of uh of positive positive changes there oh yeah they've they've grown this game unbelievably even since uh my 2000 and like 5 2006 and then i mean 
every year it feels like the it's graphics are getting updated uh, everything's getting more streamlined um some really stupid changes but yeah uh some really ingenious ones i was really happy when they fixed faction warfare so um so was this about the time um that you started getting into like faction warfare or was there something else that you did um after you returned from dust 514 no, uh, my return was entirely just faction warfare because I had seen, I think Blight's Wretch, if you know who that is, he made a video on making ISK from the LP. Oh, yeah. For a newbie, it, that's just like, oh, man. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> I can it, make, it was insane because I was starting, I was, I started getting like 200 mil in like a couple hours. It was insane compared to the high sec mission stuff that I was oh. used to. Yeah, especially when you're running what level threes, you know, maybe level fours, but no, you know, it no, took like level takes... ones. Like, yeah. I, I think I was in a Kestrel that had like a single light missile launcher and maybe two rocket launchers, and yeah, it just seems uh, repair on there completely too. crazy to like if you're like, well, I could just start off and do these level one missions for the next five days to maybe make what. 50 million <laughs> it's really bad like the payout is yeah. so bad and you have to grind them to get just to get to level two and but it, or i can go to faction warfare what run one defensive plex a large in the right spot yeah. and you know what that's it's upwards of like you know 30 40 million isk you might be able to make <laughs> especially now with the battlefields like everybody mm -hmm. in there if you find some battlefield that nobody is contesting there's just one gigantic blob in there you just grab like a frigate and just seagull you'll make like 200 mil right uh, and if you do it at the right time it you can spend like five minutes making 200 mil if you're true uh through seagull um, yeah so i i did faction warfare stuff for a while uh maybe like a couple months and then i just got burnt out i think mainly from just like dying so much it was a big uh kind of kind of a detracted from the experience you know because I, I see all these videos of people destroying things and ships and then i try those ships out and then get absolutely mauled by everybody so it's kind and of this is before the changes um so still you've got the the worm hell and the gar yeah. garmer garmer fucking garmer fuckery basically that you had to deal with and you were solo, is that correct? You didn't. You didn't yeah, I, I was corp. just in the NPC corp. I wasn't connected to any players. Um, I was actually just straight up killing everybody that I saw. So I got kicked out of Minmatar oh. Militia at one point because I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to kill certain things. Um, <laughs> so that wow. Was, that, was, that was a rude, rude awakening. So you then summer I child. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, then I stopped playing for like another two years. And then again... Um, there's this guy, Dadex, I think it is his YouTube. I started getting all these EVE Online videos again, right? Um, and he had all these awesome videos for, like, new players on alpha accounts. Like, just going into low sec and doing, like, Asteroid Belt, uh, like, ratting and all these things to try to, like, get you back in the game. Like, get uh, some starting ISK and stuff. Um, so I watched a lot of his videos, and a big thing that I found interesting was um, exploration stuff he had a whole bunch of videos on that and there is this one there's this one video where this guy made like a billion isk in like two minutes from a ghost site and i was like that's that's what i want to do so i spent that's when i made this character um the 5318208 and i started just grinding a bunch of exploration stuff as an alpha account so what i would do is just hop in like a two mil heron and um at first, I went into wormholes to find data and relic site stuff, um, but I, I just I don't know what it is with wormholes. But for me, the you really need a ship that can deal with the sleepers to do any sort of hacking in wormholes. So what I started doing was, um, well, I watched these videos from Alpha Bob, I think is his name, um, on YouTube, who, um, like, he has this whole, uh, like. He has this whole series of trying to get a billion isk in the first hour of a new character, and he actually did it wow. uh, just with exploration. Um, so what he would do is he'd uh, use a filament to get into Nullsec, uh, mm -hmm. and then do a bunch of exploration in there. And yeah, that you can find tons of really good sites. Um, so I did that to make my first billion isk, which was a big milestone for me. Um, 
I was very proud of that. After like five years of playing on and off, I finally made a billion. Um, and then that's when I found this corp invite to a corp called Team Catastrophic. Um, I I don't think it's I don't think it's really around anymore because it kind of just fell off after like the CEO uh, stopped playing. Uh, but basically, it was kind of a gateway into an incursion running uh, community. Uh, I think it was, um, I forget which one. It was, oh yeah, it was TDF, if you know anything about incursions. it was A little the, bit, uh, um, I, and that sounds very familiar as a group. I, I don't think they're around anymore, right? Oh, TDF, oh, I don't know, actually. Um, if TDF is I know that anymore. there's been some weirdness that happened in that community recently where there was falling out. I was reading on Reddit of different groups that were long time standing you know important groups that you know fell out from each other of like having war decking issues and stuff like that that oh. happened to like big fuz deep something maybe i'm maybe i'm making that up i could be making that up anyways continue so yeah i don't know i'm not really sure yeah uh where was i so yeah i joined because i was kind of done with hacking like i already did because it's kind of it's pretty re repetitive um so i joined this corp uh, they kind of had a whole like skill plan to get into a starting, starting like Megathron fit, which was the minimum um, to get into a TDF fleet. Uh, but by the time I was done training for the Megathron, uh, the CEO of the corp just stopped playing, and so everything kind of fell apart. And there's this guy. It was basically just me and just me and him left, like logging in because I kept trying to. Um, like log in and try to interact like on the discord and stuff i was always uh on comms and everything but it was basically just me and this guy called x terran who x terran is still in that server to this day and it's basically just him talking to himself continuously every single day <laughs> um, which i think is really unfortunate because he's a really nice guy but his corp that he spent basically from its from its like the, the genesis of the corp he'd been trying to build it up with the ceo and then the ceo just stopped playing and everybody left and it's, it's that sucks actually, but... yeah yeah so, that's yeah, kudos to him i hope do you I know if he still plays he finds... or... yeah no i'm pretty sure he still plays the game um he's not like pvp or anything he he does a bunch of mining and things like that but i hope at some point he'll abandon team catastrophic and uh join a community that actually deserves them um yeah if it's so yeah, I left CEO too. rights I, I it's really a little talk. hard yeah he can't really he can't get it back and up and running um so i left that corp and i joined kodari militia i just joined the npc one because i just felt like doing trying to get better at pvp um because I'd kind of gotten some of the basics down with my, like when I was in Minimitar Militia, but I just wanted to kind of get better. Um, so I just joined Kodari Militia because it's close to Jita, and I was already kind of based out of Jita, um, which is great. Yeah, I it's a. I don't understand how you guys can live without the supermarket of Jita. Well, first of all, I can't even go to high sec with Frozen. And oh. people look I look sideways at me and I blow up basically because of uh, oh, no. the police. Um, but the um, main way that I do it is by using an alt and I just, I live out of low sec. So, you know, I yeah. any combatant carry. I, so that's my kind of like thing about that actually is like a, a like, how do you even trust going to high sec being in the militia? Like, I would, if it, as soon as I joined the militia, I knew, like, I can't go to high sec anymore. Like, I didn't actually, not right away. I take that back. After getting blown up multiple times, when I very first joined up with Faction Warfare and learning that basically, oh, they can come to high sec and they yep. can murder your ass and they can also do it without the cops on their back if they get, like, 10 or more people to hold up those cops you can do a lot of different things pos stuff you can kill stuff people pretty easily while tanking the cops um and so there i learned very quickly that man my i have to have a faction warfare character that does faction warfare 
and I have to have an industrial guy who basically is designed to haul my stuff around in a deep space transport. Um, and so that is, uh, so my thing is like, how do you go to Jitta without dying? <laughs> like, uh, it... probably luck. Uh, I, I've never gotten killed from people have tried, like there's been like polarized, um, like T3Ds and stuff that wait to gank me when I try to leave, but I just use an Insta on dock. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I usually fly like cruisers and frigates, so. Yeah, that, that does make it a little bit easier. Um, I don't even fly anything too big. Yeah, you did say that your primary focus was below the battleship, so that does help yep. out a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, I hear so many stories of people losing billions of it. And we used to go and do the same thing with cockbake thrashers. That's what we did to catch the frigates. Um, yeah. And we had a guy named uh, Killer Trout, one of his... He was one of the coolest people. We, we found him in low sec way back in the day and pirated him. And he was like, how the fuck did you do that? I was running a mission. How would you find me? And we were like, let me teach you. And he's like, and he just fucking latched onto and became one of the greatest PVPers that we had of all time. Good old Killer Trout Cade, the number one LLER Trout. And I think there might be like a zero or something for one of the things. The leet speak. And he, but in any case, uh, yeah, so he got a cockbait thrasher to go out and smash stuff. But yeah, so you joined up with the uh, Kaldari this time, and you yep. you went, uh, you know, got that, you know, ejection from Chitta. Make sure you keep going. And uh, yeah. so how'd it go this second time around? So you, uh, you did this in Mimitar space that's kind of blown up everybody, causing havoc. And, uh, and now you're in Kaldari space. What'd you do this time? You go solo again, or did you uh, find a corp? Yeah, I was solo for a while, actually. I was solo for like a month, um, just flying like T1 frigates around. Um, that was kind of my, that's when I really learned like the basics, the, like the, cause you know, there's the basics of PVP and then there are the real like basics of PVP. Like there are things that are like, oh, like you orbit thing in a rocket ship you know, whatever. Um, but then there's kind of just knowing engagements and knowing people that you want to avoid or people that you want to like specifically go for and specifically about fair engagements. Cause I always had a lot of trouble thinking like, why are these people trying to get me to fight them considering they have numbers and they have all these things and they, all these people like implants and everything, like making fun of people. Like, how do they think that a fa a, an unfair engagement, like, is something to be proud about? But that's kind of when I, I just figured out, like, this is this is Eve, you know? There are, there are no such thing as fair engagements. Everybody that you see could be linged out and, like, have crazy, uh, like, six-bill pods and all this stuff. It's like, a fair engagement is never something that you want like the only the way mm -hmm. that a pvp fight happens in uh low sec faction warfare space is somebody thinks they can kill somebody two well two people think that they can kill each other mm -hmm. and only one of them is right right so one of them is either like just straight up stupid or they didn't like consider all the variables like right yeah two people two people two people think that they can win but only one wins right yeah, and that's also very that's... rare in EVE. The more often, you know, kind of thing is that there's, you know, overwhelming force is applied. Yeah. Um, and that, that is kind of the thing, though, is that even with overwhelming force, somebody had to have fucked up or yeah. thought they could beat the overwhelming force. Um, exactly. and, and that does happen. Um, but a lot of the times it's fuck up. Like, if you're in a plex, you're 90% safe. Like, it's... There's very rare of occasion where you, if you were paying attention, you couldn't have just got the fuck out either by descan or even just you see somebody coming into the plex. It takes them a, like five seconds to get out of warp. So as long as you're, you know, hitting the warp button as you know to an object that you can dock at or something, um, you're playing in that spot or you know that you have a safe or get some safes and stuff. So it's all about you being smart usually in order to not get caught. <clears throat> Same thing goes for ratting in 0, 0.0. You know, there's 
so, uh, you know, when you're taking your fleet out and about, if you, you know, you got a small five man fleet that's going out and about and you don't have a scout, like that's on you, you know, you, you yeah. warp to the wrong spot at the wrong time with your group or you called a pull out, but nobody was listening. Almost all deaths in Eve, I would say a good 80% of them that, you know, pulling the number right out of my ass and throwing it on the wall is, uh, you know, about 80% probably is just people being stupid. And the other 20% is the, I thought I could beat them, you know, with maybe some variables inside of there as well. But most people just yeah, I mean, fuck up. In Information is the single most important thing in the game. Like, you take a fight because you think you can win. So if you try to mess with people's expectations by trying to run, like, off-meta things, um, like, I was always trying to make, like, hiding kestrels work and like just today i was flying around in a heron and i killed like a slicer because he thought i was just some easy kill <laughs> like the the fun for me which i learned coming back into the game and being in kaldari uh anyways um the fun for me in this game is messing with people's expectations and killing them because they thought they could win it's not like oh i threw 10 uh megathrons at your corvette and i won it's like you thought you could kill me but you didn't because you thought wrong. I love turning the tables on people going out with a new Tristian and people are just like, oh yeah, it's a Tristian. I'll go in and fight that and if I know I can newt you out, <clears throat> then I'm, I'm going to make you really cry. Um, yeah, like before um, the FW changes, um, you know, like I killed, a, I killed a daredevil that slid into me. I was in a new Tristan and I just newted him out and I killed him and it was hilarious <laughs> and he was he was talking so much shit which is the best part um, yeah yeah no it's uh, it, um i love to play the the hunted in this game i do hunting yeah. um but hunting is a lot of chasing bots or chasing yeah. people who aren't fucking up enough you know exactly. like they're just uh you know i people i always get ah you're running away and it's like probably a reason why this guy's running away and there's probably a reason why you're upset that he ran like that's yeah. you know but you're you're just in you know like to be to be 100 percent honest you're just being an asshole right now because yeah. you wanted to get an easy kill and you didn't get it um i always love that when um you know we'll take some cloaky ships out and do some fucking around and, oh yeah uh, and it'll be like put a bait out there that's like a catalyst navy issue or something and an e and i comes in on it and then we drop on top of them i'm always like I had one guy flip out on us. You blobbing assholes. We were just a bunch of Catalyst Navy issues. And I was like, dude, you took an E and I into a flex against a Catalyst Navy issue. You knew you were gonna win that fight. You were you were very confident in winning that fight. I bet. And when yeah. we turn the tables on you, you you're gonna cry. Like Eve is unfair. Deal with it, bitch. Like I, yeah, exactly. Um, but. I do love, uh, you know, trying to even it out a little bit is a good, uh, getting good fights where, like, you thought you were going to win and it came very close to you winning are some of the coolest fights in EVE that it's rare to happen, but because it's so rare, the adrenaline pump is just that much more of, like, am I going to win this? Like, oh, this is so close. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 crazy but i i gotta say that freaking cloaking strat is very is very devious that it is, is that is that's horrible it's very nice uh, uh it's uh i love i love it like and a lot of the times the enemy doesn't even know what the fuck is going on you know you yeah. can stream i do i try and like even the odds a little bit i'm like dude i'm streaming all you need to do is watch the stream yeah, that's a, that's exactly that's exactly what happened last night, right? Like I was, I wore, I saw it, there were two execs, and then one of them just disappeared into thin air, and it was scary. I was like, where did it go? Like, did it warp off? It yep. Warp off. No, because they, what we try and do is we wait until they get all the way into the plex, uh, so that they fall off of D or not D scan, but uh, visual. So as soon as if they fall off of visual and you're not on overview anymore, we'll come in. So a lot of the times, it's like we literally appear out of fucking thin air, and you're like, these aren't cloaky ships, so obviously they didn't just decloak and show up, right? Like, they had to 
been at a really close safe, but how did they, how did they do that without me scanning them? Like, well, I've had multiple people like hit me up and be like, where the, what the fuck was that? <laughs> like, where, yeah. did, how did you do that? Yeah, and that's, that's, that's just what's fun in this game. I mean, just doing PVE and all this shit is just not fun. I, no. I for like hours at a time. The grind in this game is, I mean, in any game is, uh, is not the aspect that I like. Um, the the how Eve is alive is what really like just makes me fucking crazy about Eve Online. Like, there's no yeah. other game that has a historian who comes in and interviews like fifty people or something like that to go through the entire history of the great empires of Eve. You know. Have you ever read the book uh, or listened to the audio Empires of Eve? Uh, no, I've not actually. Highly suggested. It takes you all the way back to the beta. It talks about the different groups like evolution and stuff that were in the beta. It talks about the groups that like came from Earth and beyond and created their own. Um, I believe that was the. Uh, oh, what was the name of the alliance? Um, it wasn't Phoenix, it was... Anyways, there's, you know, it, it talks about all the different histories and takes you through the different grudges, Jade Constantine and the role-playing group that kind of came in in the north. Um, and Jade Constantine had, like, this, you know, crazy story about, you know, how um, one of the kings of England was putting down a, a crazy rebellion in... in uh, um... Oh, what was the uh, country? So he's putting down a rebellion somewhere. He comes in. Oh, I think I lost you. Oh, no. I wonder what happened to him. So we're going to give him a little bit here and see if we can get him back. Um, don't have my... Oh, here it goes. Awesome. Oh, I lost you there. Uh, I, sorry, I don't know what just happened there. I think my internet may have cut out. I, I've been having weird internet issues as of late. It was super annoying. Uh, but in any case, check out Empires of Eve. Very yeah, interesting book. Brings you all the way up to like 2012 and gives you like the whole history of the player-made empires. Nowhere else will you get that. This is a living universe. And you really get to feel it with the, you know, jumping into PvP, so. Yeah, that's, I think that's why I always, why I have kept and why I still do just keep coming back to this game. Because there is no comparison to any other game. Like, you could say, I mean, it's a space game that has spaceships and, like, lasers and missiles and all this are in other games. But just the, just the breadth of this, of this game is so unique and unparalleled, I would say. It's yeah. just... It's very intriguing to me. It's a lot of fun. It's kind of why uh, the uh, Faction Warfare I also find is like the niche thing that interested me a lot is the concept of a forever war. I was like, oh, I just going to be in a constant state of warfare in this game? That's where I want to be. Like, no life is interesting. Um, it's like the, the wars are a lot of fun. The, you know, the constant PvP that are, is going on out there is awesome. But there's like 20 jumps to get to like any pvp content sometimes depending yeah. on your empire maybe even more um yeah. and in this time of peace it's kind of you know annoying and the time of war is usually like oh you gotta go 80 jumps to like get somewhere where you know like faction warfare was like you're a constant state of war and you can undock maybe some find a fight in your system that you just undocked in if not a couple jumps away. Yeah, Faction Warfare is, is, is very special. I think it's definitely one of the best places to learn uh, like PvP in general. Um, I'd say basically all the things that I learned in Faction Warfare has uh, like crossed into what I do in NullSec and everything, like baiting people um, and basically just everything, every type of flying. Uh, even scram kiting, which isn't doesn't really have much of a place in NullSec. 
um, anymore anyways. Uh, I'd say it's still like, yeah, I don't actually, I, okay. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, fact short, <laughs> first one. That's what I'm going to say. That's what yeah. I'm going to say. No, it's 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 a it's a real blast, and yeah, there's lots of different ways you can learn, lots of different things that you can do here. That really is very unique to this area. You know, there's not a lot of places that you can find where people want to fight each other, and they have designated places to do that at. Um, that you don't have sino interference, you don't you don't have you know a lot of different elements like the the bubbles and stuff that you have to deal with in 0.0. .0. Um, it's a it's a very unique area in Eve Online, and it pays out the fucking nose, man. Like you can without even trying. Like I'm up to you know three or four million LP, and I'm like really not trying to make LP. I'm just trying to get a fight. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I feel like we kind of we went off on a bit of a yes. We went on a tangent. So there. you you came uh, back the second time. Yeah, uh, I came back the second time with this character. Um, so yeah, I was in camo just solo, and then at one point I killed, um, there's like this Punisher that was baiting for a hook bill. I killed the Punisher and then actually killed the hook bill, um, because he burnt out his guns from like a different fight. So Oof, I was yep. able to kill him. I killed them both in a Kestrel, um, which is unfortunate for him, which is that, that information thing. He thought I was going to be an easy kill, but, um, I... Well, I guess it was kind of luck because he burnt out his guns. But um, <laughs> so I killed them, and then there's tons of salt um, because I was a neutral. Wait, no, was I a neutral? I was a neutral. I was a neutral before I actually joined Calmill. Um, mm, okay. so yeah, when I came back, I was a neutral. That's right. I was a neutral, and the it was two Galmo guys that I killed, um, and they were talking a bunch of shit, and. Um, the Kaldari in the system, because there is some big uh, fleet battle. This was before Battlefields and the Faction Warfare uh, re reboot, but uh, there was some big fight, and the Calmo guys in local were kind of laughing at the Galente guys, like, oh, even neutrals are farming Galente and all this shit. <laughs> um, and then the Galmo guys are like, neutrals shouldn't even like be allowed in here, like, what are they doing? Oh, um, that's bullshit. So yeah, it was, there's a lot of salt on both sides, but <laughs> then I got the this, I got this message from a guy called Henrik Suzaku, um, who is the CEO of the Saitso uh, Interstellar Security Corporation, um, which is connected to IRED. Uh, I got a message from him um, saying like, oh, that, because I, because some guy was saying, well, no, like we were fighting, but then I posted, because I record all of my fights um, because I, I like to see what I did wrong. <laughs> um, and also I, well, I, I have made some YouTube videos. I should probably make some more. Um, but yeah, I like to record my fights just to see what what I could have done better, what the other person should have done better. Um, so I, uh, some guy was, I basically, I uploaded the video to a Vimeo and posted the link in local saying like, no, you guys were both in Galente militia. Like I, you were both shooting at me. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Um, so one of the Kodari guys in there, uh, Henrik, he saw that and sent me a convo saying like, oh, that was a good fight, uh, nice job. And then he sent me a corporation uh, invite to his corp. Okay, cool, um, yeah. So yeah, that was that was my introduction into IRED, um, which is where I'm at right now, right? So I was in um, Saitso for, I think, like six months or so. Um, I attended lots of, uh, like, because you know you know John Revenant, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the he's one of the um, FCs. Mill, yeah, FCs, yeah. And yeah, and he I I would say he runs. Technically, Ariga runs iBlue, I think, but he runs the iRed side, which is the faction warfare side. Um. So yeah, I I basically just attended a bunch of fleets. That's kind of that was my introduction to fleet combat, and I um was primarily like uh running like interceptors and things like that. That's when I got my first uh, Omega. Actually, I was all I was an Alpha clone um, for the entire time before I um, joined IRED. And did you so I, did you find that to be fun during that? I mean, like, or not? Uh, how would I say that? Like, how hindered did you feel? I when... didn't feel hindered at all because That's I didn't awesome. know what I was. I didn't know what I was missing. <laughs> um, I know. I know what I was missing now. But <laughs> they gave you a little bit of crack, and all of a sudden you were like, yeah. "Oh yeah, okay." 
and see yeah, what now I, does I can't try. even imagine I, I can't even imagine trying to PvP without like tech 2 afterburners or like oh, tech yeah. 2 drones I can't even imagine now I think I would I would get completely destroyed to be honest without Omega um, so yeah that's when I really started getting to like more fleet PvP stuff which was fun for a while but after after a while of killing a bunch of defen uh, like defenseless freaking the uh, overwhelming ratters. force yeah. yeah it, it kind of got it kind of got um boring but so i mean did you get John... in... sorry oh, uh did, did you get into any fights that um were like the 20 on 20 30 on 30 um or was that something that like didn't happen at all or just rarely too rarely for you what do you think about um, those kind of fights those yeah those those are fun um that primarily yeah that's I got into a lot more fights like that later. Um, when I was in Ired, that was more like 10 man, like 10 to 15 man gangs. Because mm -hmm. um, John does the thing where he has like 11 harpies and then a stork to boost them onto things. Yep. That's, that's kind of his whole fleet. Um, yeah, we got some crazy kills. There's this one like snuffed out panther that we boosted off of. We like quadruple boosted him off of a fax and then killed it. It was hilarious. Um, we killed this panther. It was, it was that was fun. But yeah, basically just a bunch of harpy shenanigans. Um, that was kind of my introduction into larger fleet PvP. Um, and then I started getting into more small gang stuff with um, like Tech One Frigate uh, fleets or um, like more like kind of nano gang fleets with um, designated like DPS and tackle and things. Um, I did lots of tackle uh, flying, which I think is why I'm so good at running away like i've said multiple times i'm very good at running away um and killing things at range um, yeah kiting so yeah, is, of... is a lot of fun in this game and if you're doing it right i i once uh took i was streaming i took a thrasher out from jitta i had put 500 plex in the in my uh cargo hold and like kind of even divvied it up so that it would drop um at least you get some uh, of it if it uh if i got blown up and I just was streaming, I'm like, announcing to everybody, like, hey, I've got fucking Plex in my cargo hold, come fucking get me. And was able to actually get out of Jidda, um, got into Losec the back route way, but uh, some people that were watching, like, tried gate camping me, caught me on one side, got out, got to the other side, finally was able to burn away, get out, okay, get to the next station, system, 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 okay, jump, 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 jump. Like, finally made my way to Tama. Um, was, you know, getting chased the whole way. I think I got to Tama with, like, in the hull um, at that point. Uh, so I'm on fire, I get to Tama, and then I just dock up, go back out, go to a plex, burn away, and then just watch the fucking idiots, you know, trying to get to me, some of them that were being really smart. You know, I was like, nope, I'm not going to play with you. You're being really smart about this. Um, so I'm going to play smart. But then there was a dumbass who was like, I'm coming for you, and just like yeah. came right at me, and I was like, "Yeah, me too. I'm shooting you," and you know, just blew up probably like three or four like frigates, like uh, maybe one or two of them were tech two, and uh, and I was just like, finally did get caught and blown up, but man, that was just a blast to be like just you know yeah, just is... trying to keep away from them, you know. Oh, I'm gonna start at zero. Oh, look at that, I'm actually moving. You're not catching up to me as fast anymore. My fucking artillery's blapping you in the face the whole time. Yeah, frigates that run like leave the safety of their of their freaking fleet is the most beautiful thing that can happen <laughs> in this game. I love it. I love brainless tackle frigates. It's probably my favorite thing. Yep, that's the uh, that's the bread and butter of. Uh, I do that with stabbers as well. Um, yeah, really. stabbers, they're awesome. Yeah, the the barrage, long range, like super fast, big ass frigate. Basically, I mean. I don't know if you know they classify it as a cruiser but the fucker acts like a giant ass frigate it is a frigate i mean it's it does the dps of a frigate it's it has above average dps for a frigate two utility high slots and a full rack of drones making mm -hmm. it in my opinion the best frigate in the game yeah it is the best frigate in the game for sure best frigate in the game uh um, so you got into like some some minor fleet fighting, um, but a lot of it was mostly like you know overwhelming force onto stuff. So yeah, you, you did you did you stick around and try and uh, do solo at that point, or what was your yeah, game plan um, at that point? So yeah, it was kind of like big fleet, and then I 
got down to like small gang with Henrik. Henrik is one of the best. Um, he's he's a really good pilot. He's a really nice guy as well. Um, he gave me a lot of advice. Um, and really, yeah, I mean, it's great. He he basically just invited me into this community that I'm still in today. So I'm very happy about meeting him. So yeah, I did lots of small gang stuff, and then I got kind of got tired of that, and that's when I really started um, building my building my solo chops up. I would say I did a lot of a lot more T1 freak stuff. Um, I flied, yeah, I mean, I flied a lot of T1 freaks and mainly tried to hunt comets and hook bills because um, that's just those are the those are the kings of low sec if you ask mm -hmm. me the comet and the hook bill. Yes, absolutely. Um, so that's that's when I really kind of dialed in my uh, the laws of of Eve Online PvP. It's like it's all about engageability, um, and looking engageable and like flying bad ships, ships that are usually seen as being bad, um, like the Executioner, for example. I feel like a lot of people see it as just like some weak like kiting ship. But you can do some really crazy things with it, and just catching people off guard with like scram, newt, uh, all this shit was really what I was just having so much fun with. Um, and that's actually when I really started getting kind of burnt out again, because I was basically just being really salty about not having enough targets to shoot, because my time zone was primarily uh, like Kodari militia guys up, so I couldn't shoot half the freaking people that I saw. Um, which is very yeah, you annoying. play like around this time actually, which is like yeah, I play around nobody's this time. nobody's playing at this point. Like yep. every time I come out around this time, I'm like, all right, I might be able to find some solo. I mean, the big gangs aren't really around either, so that's kind of nice. But uh, um, yeah. but it's not really as many solos as well. I was like going into a system and seeing like ten or twenty reds because then I'm like, okay, somebody will fucking come and try and solo fight me. Hopefully, right. So. <laughs> That's when I told Henrik, like, I'm just, I'm going to become pirate again. Like, I just want to kill everybody that I see. Um, he kind of, like, half tried to talk me out of it, but he was also, I did the same exact thing that you did. I just dropped everything and just started killing people. Um, so he kind of understood, and he was also, like, because I was just going to go back to, like, NPC Corp and just cut all my ties to everything, um, which... I mean, I guess maybe it was kind of a mistake, but he convinced me to stay within the I red kind of umbrella, and that's when I joined Change of Red Spirit, then, which is the corp that I'm in, uh, which is connected to I red, um, and that's when I moved to Syndicate, which I I live in now. Um, it's yeah, I, mean, I can't talk about it earlier, but if there's somebody tuning in now, it's Serpentis controlled NPC Nullsec. Um, so that's that's been within the last couple of months. Uh, let's see when I joined. Joined Gingerbread Spaceman. Yeah, four months. Um, I've technically lived there. Um, it's a nice. It's very quiet space. There's not a lot of stuff around, which is kind of a blessing and a curse because uh, PvP is what I like doing. Mm -hmm. um, but Eve Uni. There's an Eve Uni. Uh, community that lives there so there's some squishy targets and every now and again there's um there's some russian alliance pretty high up into our pocket um that you can kind of mess with every now and again but the pvp is very um it's 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 different yeah like faction warfare is my favorite type of pvp because in um let's see in Nullsec, right, and just low sec or in at Pokven, uh, a blob versus a solo pilot, which is usually me, is basically solo pilot flies around, blob sends in a tackle, tackle gets tackle on the frigate, and then a bunch of people warp in and kill the the guy. Right. That's that's just that's the gameplay loop. That's all that happens, which is not very fun after a while. Yeah, I like that in uh, you know low sec. Uh faction warfare stuff it's a lot of dead space fighting so you can't warp you know so come out and get me you know it's gonna take your buddies like fucking 60 seconds to get over here and that means that i get a 60 second solo fight with you yeah you exactly that's that's where the fun of a faction warfare comes in for me because you can you can prosper really well as just solo or in a small gang so um, is this entire time are you making money 
only through faction warfare, or are you finding yeah, other kind of revenues? a combination, kind of a combination of faction warfare and um, uh, just you know swiping the, just buying plex. Yeah, um, I find to, to be honest, I'm not against. Uh, I'm against like spending a bunch of money so that you can be badassery at this game. Um, yeah, like I've, if you're I've spending, never flown, I've never done implants, and I've never right. flown expensive ships. Yeah, I've I've it's got some implants for my yeah. super back in the day, but I, I fly almost ninety percent of the time. I am drug free and I am uh, implant free, and then usually I'm just taking. If I'm not drug free, it's because of the fucking daily dose of crack that they give you, um, and it's not even daily, but the the uh, boosters that they give you for free, and that you've got to use them or you lose them. You know, I might as well do some drugs then. If yeah, you know, I, you know, I, I definitely use them. drugs. I definitely use drugs. I'll tell you that much. They're great. Um, because it's like you pay like a million isk to get a twenty percent bonus to armor right. repair amount. It's insane. Yeah, um, that's it, it's nice to start off on the low ones, but after a while, like the reason why I don't do a lot of that is because it's the only the low ones that if I would do, which I really don't, I would do. Because uh, like the free and really low are good, but I can't imagine spending a frigate's worth of you know if I'm going to take out a uh, comet and I spend a drug that cost me thirty million isk. Well, what the fuck? Yeah, I just lost thirty. I just lost the isk war like right off exactly. the bat before the fight, and I might not even get a fight. Like, um, I mean, maybe I don't lose the isk war completely if I can get like. I don't know what is it like three hours that those drugs last usually usually or something like that so maybe i can kill like three to like ten guys during that time maybe then that pays off for the drug a little bit but did you did you need the drug really in order to accomplish that if not then you just wasted 30 million so that's that's my mindset on it but you're right taking low drugs are really good yeah just the three percent overclocker that's like five hundred thousand isk i have like 10 of those in every single ship that i fly because it's just <laughs> it, you pay basically nothing to get an extra it's basically it's navigation level six that's all that it is ah smart smart good way it's of thinking extra, about that. it's it's an extra skill uh excuse extra skill me point. but yeah that's uh so primarily though you were you know making most of your money off of faction warfare and um yeah and like you said you know if i don't have to uh i was saying about using the credit card is that if i don't have to do the insidious grinding that this game has and i can just pay some money to keep me into the pvp zone then i don't see that as a big a big issue um but then again there's also the uh winning crazy stuff that like uh will allow you to all of a sudden be like ah I've, I'm set for the next couple years, actually. <laughs> yeah. I just so yeah, I did. Or... Yeah, when I was in I read, I yeah, most of my ISK was from the LP gains and yeah, credit card. And then when I when I left I read to join iBlue, I actually did not move to Syndicate at all. I just stayed in Faction Warfare and I just killed everything that I saw, without any um. There's there's like basically one guy that I couldn't kill. There's a mirror into Revan. That was the only guy that was blue. To um, <laughs> I like I, it was great. I killed everything, um, and then I just kind of lost direction, and I just stopped playing the game again because, like, you kill all these things and there's all this content, but none of it really has a purpose. Mm -hmm. Like everything that you kill and every site that you capture in Faction Warfare has like a purpose. You know, it's that's that was something that I yeah I did the same thing too. We, we did a, a little stint when I first made Golden Age Empire um, before I did the rebranding uh, or when I was doing a different rebranding at that time. Um, I was like, you know what? Uh, I'm going to try the pirate life. I li really like faction warfare space, but um, I don't want to, you know, have to deal with blues, like you said, forced blues uh, on top of that. And I was going out with a buddy. We, we joined up with the Nisawa cartel and we were, you know, killing stuff we had a station uh two stations up and running in, in the great jewel of uh the jewel of the black rise the the taurus the shining jewel of black rise um and things were going really well but i felt the same exact thing where i was like man 
why am I doing what I'm doing? You know, like I'm just yeah. kind of pirating. We've got, we've got our stations up and running. Things are going pretty good. But I was like, man, I got to get back to faction warfare. I really felt a purpose, you know, like, and I could make some money. Like I was also not making any fucking money when I was a pirate, like besides the loot drops and stuff like that. It was very, uh, very low on the activities that I wanted to do in order to actually um, make money. And so I, I didn't want to do exploration. I didn't want to do writing in any way, shape or form or, you know, level four missions or whatever, you know, like I, I'd have access to at that point. And Faction Warfare was just so nice because it would just be a, a steady, easy, easy amount of income from just going out and looking for a fight or waiting for a fight to happen to me. Because I like to just sit in a plex. And I hated sitting in a plex as a fucking pirate. Because I was like, this yeah. timer is never going to tick down. I'm just sitting here. There's no fucking reason for me to be here other than to get a fight. But there's, like, what if nobody shows up at all? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is, like, give me just a timer. Give me some isk or something for being here. So I decided I'd come back. And that's when we rejoined Faction Warfare and started this whole Federation Frontline report. Uh, and yeah, the change, I was telling everybody, what did, what did you think about the changes when they first came? Because I was telling everybody that they're going to fix faction warfare. I know it. They're like, it's like, you must be new. You've never, like, they're never going to touch this again. And I'm like, man, they've made updates. Small ones here and there, but faction warfare is the fucking future of EVE Online. Just wait and see. And then they, they did it. Uh, so what did you think of uh, the faction warfare changes when they came about? Um, I, I don't really think I can have an opinion on it because I was only really in Faction Warfare for like two months before the changes. But okay. I would say the biggest thing, I mean, not being chased by Garmers, <laughs> things like that, that's, that, that's good, right? But I think specifically the changes, like the addition of frontline, um, systems was awesome because before there could be any... AFK bot anywhere making the same exact isk as where there's lots of people, but mm -hmm. the frontline the frontline systems really kind of consolidated the the player base, which was which is great. I think that was the that was the best change that they made. The battlefields are also cool, but they kind of just become whoever has the most people wins. Yeah, and there's also the offense and defense one. So like if yeah. if you're going i really think they need to get rid of that because there is no difference in the mechanics of the battlefield where it's, there is a difference in the mechanics of the defensive plexing and offensive plexing that matters because yep. you get less lp and you get less lp because the rat isn't going you don't have to kill it so it's you know you can take a frigate into a large or an open and run it with you know also but i don't like that either i think they should get rid of offense and defense altogether in the whole concept of this thing they should just have two rats in there your rat and their rat and if you come in you've got to kill one in order for the timer to go down um the, the, the enemy rat and the enemy rat should be red the allied rat should be blue like yeah, that's that's one thing that they should the change fuck like, why and, is my rat red that's i so mean stupid. And not in battlefields though so yeah, um so right. there's hope there's possibilities for that kind of stuff um and then they should just do away with the idea of that there's offense and defensive plexing. There should be offense and defensive, like, there, there should be my space and their space, frontline systems. Um, but no, there shouldn't be offense and defense because I hate the fucking completely empty, you know, Kestrel or whatever that just goes in, is counting down the timer. And most of the time will run anyways, even though it's empty. Um, I think that's kind of stupid for defensive flexing. And I also think it's very discouraging to do a battlefield that is at 10% contested space that's defensive because you got to do just as much work in the battlefield to accomplish that. And you're getting robbed of like all of the LP because uh, it's only 10% contested. So, yeah, that's, I'd say overall there were improvements though. Which... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huge. Everything. This is a night and fucking day, man. Night and day. Like the battlefield or the the battle, the war zone is no longer flipping back and forth. If you'd noticed too, um, I don't know if you were aware, but before this, 
fuck, man. Every three to six months, it was, oh, the Galente took all of the space. Oh, the Keldari took all of the space. You know, and they were just, it was a back and forth to get your tears up. And now it's the, uh, the complete opposite of that, where it's, you know, fighting that is happening is happening in the important areas that people want to fight over. People want to fight over Nenemelia, OICX, fucking um, Sujarento, like Aboon and stuff like that. People, these, Fliet, like these are the strongholds that we are trying to hold out against and keep uh, our docking rights for. And that's all that matters. Yeah. So yeah, after I lost, uh, I mean, I, actually, I don't know if we're even talking about my origin. It's kind of, it's kind of been, I don't know if there's other questions we should be going for, but um, after I kind of lost direction after becoming a pirate, that's when I actually moved to where my courtmates lived because this basically I contacted the iBlue um, CEO, which is Ariga Mancali, and he gave me some corps to join that were like in my time zone. And the gingerbread spaceman was on the bottom of the list, so I knew that was the that was the one for me. <laughs> um, I basically I just joined it and then. I just like said hi to the people in my corp and then completely like just ghosted them for like a month. Um, and then one of them just randomly out of nowhere said, hey, do you want to like actually come move down? And I said, yeah, sure. So I moved down into Syndicate. Um, and that is when, that, that was kind of my introduction into NullSec PVP. I had filamented like slicers into um, like sovereign space before, but Um, this is when I kind of got the taste, like the other side. I just let you know your your connection is uh, going a little bit in and out. Can you hear me? Is that better? Oh, uh, I think I think you might be better. Try again. Okay. Uh, I might have lost you again. Is this is this any better? Ooh. Uh, no. No, well, I think you're back now. Oh, am I back? Okay. Yep, I can hear uh, you now. Now you're sound. Okay, good, good, good. Um, what was I saying? Let's see. Um, yeah, uh, doing nullsec things, nullsec PvP. Um, it's kind of interesting, you know. Uh, it's it's just very slow. Everything is it's like in slow motion here. That's kind of what I dislike <laughs> about it. Uh, that's that's the worst part. But here is when, because now I think I have like seven months of Omega paid for. Um, now, like living here, really got kind of my ISK generating up. I actually made a whole video on making ISK here. Um, that was like specifically for the corp because. Oh, that was another thing. So I don't know if you, if anybody in Faction Warfare knew about it, but um, like. About a month ago, this group called Scary Wormhole People uh, attempted to evict um, iBlue from Syndicate. Oh. Um, there was a whole, there was a whole kind of thing. I don't know why they they wanted to, but uh, basically they sent John Revenant, who is basically the CEO of both iRed. Like he's, I would say he's he's on top for both. Mm -hmm. Like Ariga is the leader of iBlue, but iBlue is a it is the sister corporation. It's right. kind of lower in the food chain um so uh i forget what his name is like i think P piolip or something from scary wormhole people sent uh john a message basically saying uh, if you don't pay us five bill a month then we will kill all of your structures and syndicate um so that was kind of i don't know where that was that that was um unwelcome i would say so john talked to the leaders of our group and basically said like no that's we're not going to do that um and that's the benefit of living in npc nullsec in that there are npc stations in basically every system our structures are are a non-issue i'm going to pull up mm -hmm. what he actually said um let's see if i can find it it was it was a little a bit ago um yeah wobo synco updates yeah let's see 
So this was this was John's like official kind of thing. So he says, I've spoken to the council members and they all agree that these terms would only erode our community structures are a non-issue for us as a whole. And ultimately we've been around long enough to see groups make attempts at turning us into some kind of renter. It was all, it always ends up the same. Groups come and go, rise and fall. This whole thing is rather short-sighted for medium term neighbors because making an enemy of RP nerds like us and our friends just ensures a conflict that will last a very long time. It's true, currently you've got the leverage of numbers, skill, and doctrine superiority, but everything changes with time. Next month or five years down the road may be different and we'll still be here. Um, so that was that was kind of his, his last message with them. <laughs> and he, I like um, it. It reminds me of Empires of Eve. <laughs> like that's, yeah. <laughs> that's something that would have um, been quoted. So yeah, they reinforced all of our structures um, and there's basically a bunch of small skirmishes um, scary wormhole people, what they would do a lot is I would, uh, like me and my corp and some other people would lead, um, like some fleets into their space because they live in solitude. They live like five jumps from us. All of their mining fleets are five jumps from our home station, which is a big problem. Um, we would just lead, uh, like fleets going in, just killing tons and tons of miners. There's kind of a joke that popped up in that John didn't understand what scary wormhole people said he thought they said we kill five bill a month not we give five bill a month right um <laughs> and on the on the day of our reinforced timers i believe we we predicted that we would lose 17 structures that day and of the 17 structures we lost we lost two structures wow and they lost um i think it was three revelations of phoenix navy and two apostles because they got counter dropped by uh deep water hooligans Oh um, right. I don't know. I think that was that was kind of the bigger thing that happened. Um John basically just ran the dinner bell uh the dinner bell. Um right. and scary wormhole people yeah, it was just not going well for them. All of their structures started getting reinforced and shit. Um and it was it was bad for them. So currently we have a NAP, I believe it's called. It's a non non aggression pact. Mm -hmm. Um basically we don't shoot them and then we won't basically the exact opposite happened like we we struck new terms and they 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 basically cannot infringe on our space anymore or else we will start killing their miners again um are they paying you crazy. now or is it you just uh, i i actually don't know <laughs> i asked him and he he didn't have a comment on that <laughs> um but it was hilarious we were killing like multiple hulk fleets with pods every single day um, it was, it was, it was not good for scary Marvel people. Um, not so scary that, anymore, huh? Yeah. And then that kind of leads us to now where like a week ago, I re-enlisted into Kaldari to, um, start, start messing with you guys again, because I kind of got bored mm -hmm. of, uh, uh, syndicate. Um, so you're really liking the, the enlistment though. So you're using that, uh, to your advantage. I'm glad that, you know, that's one change that I think was, you know, that's pretty recent this year. Um, that that was released that was after all the big big changes um, that came to faction warfare and um, what, what do you think uh, how, how do you feel about enlistment I mean obviously you're using it but uh, what's your uh, how do you feel that impacts the war zone uh, I don't know I don't I don't really have any qualm I mean I use it so I can't really talk on the matter <laughs> right but um well I mean you can that's why I think you can, can talk well how yeah. do you, I mean would you would you be I, back at full time in faction warfare if you, you couldn't enlist, or was this something? I don't know. Um, I really don't know. Do I you think... like? Um, it, it's it's interesting that uh, I think that it really allows for this. You know, allows you to get out there. It's awesome. I I think it's great. Personally, I think it's good. So I think it's it's good because you can kind of stick with the communities mm -hmm. that you're already in, but then you can also partake in faction warfare. Um, just i mean it's fun i i think faction warfare is kind of like um it's it's like kind of the arcade mm -hmm. game version of eve you know it's very kind of self-contained and it's 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 its own thing but it's just a lot of fun so what do you think, think of the uh up. changes that are going to be coming uh up again so they're iterating on faction warfare again and adding in pirates into the mix here and they're going to be invading our space and causing uh, Chaos, are you familiar with all the stuff that's coming with Havoc? Uh, I thought it was going to be 
in Zarzak there is going to be pirate faction warfare. But is it going to come to like? Nope, they they get a they get a ship caster in Zarzak. Oh, they get and, a ship caster in Zarzak. And so okay. they get to, uh, the, then they'll get invasion points. So so CCP. So at FanFest they did like a huge announcement, um, which just happened recently. At FanFest they said basically what's going to be is that you can join either the Garistas. Or you can join the Angels. Both of them have uh, the Angels just got the release. They're going are just releasing their Titan, so they you oh, yeah. will be able to get a Titan um, by doing these these uh, activities or the probably like the blueprint for yeah. the Titan, which will From, be like, worth a lot. Um, but it'll be the LP store type type kind of thing. Um, and of course, just because you have the blueprint doesn't mean you're getting a Titan. Um, it's the, yeah. that's not going to be worth it might be worth like you know maybe a couple billion or something like that but it'll take like a couple billion worth of LP in order to be able to get it so um, but in any case uh, the, they both have their titans so you'll have that they have new destroyers that are coming out um, for both of those factions and um, the idea is, is that they're going to invade faction warfare space so somewhere in Faction Warfare space, uh, a pirate starbase will go up that is dockable. Um, the shipcaster will take you to that dockable station. Um, the invasion of that space will spread if you um, conquer, you, you corrupt the system enough that it becomes fully corrupted, then any system connected to that will become corrupted as well. And so you can push this all the way out to fucking high sec. Like a 0 0.5 system can start getting invaded and start allowing for the pirates to show up and do stuff without Concord or the police getting involved because you've corrupted that space. Um, there's possibilities of maybe even bubbles being able to be used and stuff uh, in zero points or in, uh, in low sec systems. Um, so it's like degrades like the security status of stuff. Um, yeah, and, that's, that's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, and oh, so one thing I was talking with CCP Burger about this was that um, he brought in the three-body problem or whatever, where it's basically, you know, if you've got two bo uh, orbital bodies, it's, you know, pretty predictable as to what's going to happen. If you bring in a third orbital body, it completely fucks everything, and now it becomes unpredictable as to what will happen. And so will the Keldari and Galente team up together to fight the Garistas? Or will the Garistas team up with the Keldari for a short amount of time in order to fight the Galente? Um, you know, it, it's, it, will this be always changing? Or will it stay, you know, like always the Galente and Keldari, or Keldari are teaming up against the Garistas? Um, we, we, we're going to see what's going to happen here. But basically the idea is to add an element of chaos that either they win... Um, and I think that there's, I can't remember what the rewards are for either side. I mean, of course, the, the yeah, Keldari I mean, and Galente, you want to kick yeah. them out, but there's something about like, it'll stick around for a little bit longer and it's like in, their base becomes impervious for an ex extended amount of time. Um, but eventually that, that incursion will go away and then it'll go to another spot. Yeah, that's, that's going to be something, uh, I, I did not know that was going to be the case. That's that's going to be quite an interesting dynamic, I would say. Um, and also, kind of talking about uh, friends between Kodari and Galente, like, I, I think I've always kind of preached the, uh, you know, like, kind of trying to, trying to be nice to people. Like, I've... I, I, I don't think... I've only gotten really salty one time, I would say. Um, yeah, what's it's kind of funny because I feel like I have more Galente friends than I have Kaldari friends, <laughs> mainly just because uh, I think it's just because I fight I fight Galente and I kind of base my respect on people based on how good they are or uh, how how like solo or how willing to engage in uh, equal fights they are. Um, yeah, like Villa Villa Strangiato or mm -hmm. I, I probably butchering the name, but like I. I actually completely forget why we're friends, but we are friends, and that's 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 kind of cool. Um, and I know we I made know friends that. by, uh, I mean, before I'd seen you about, definitely always is like, hey, it's ha-ha. <laughs> yeah. um, but then uh, we got into that fun little fight uh, 
yeah. with uh, what I was in a stabber. What was the first one? You were you were a stabber. I was a crusader. You killed me that time, and then. Yeah, the next one I was in a comet and you were in the same stab when I killed that one. And then yep. we had That was uh, an impressive fight. Uh I was uh I was very impressed when he got underneath my guns and everything and I was like, ah, I just should have brought the nukes. I knew that I needed yeah. nukes instead of small missiles. But I thought the the, the Nosprey and the Exec Navy fight, that was the best one for me. That, that was, was the best. Intense. Yes, that was close. Um and close. uh it was that was a lot of fun and uh didn't expect the dual web, huh? I did not expect that. Nope. I thought I could get kind of under your guns. Uh, with, with I had a tracking disruptor. I think if I had gone dual web, you would have still had a range control because the exit navy is just so fast. It's very fast. It's, it's very fast, fast ship. <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was a good fight. That was a very, I'm happy. I'm happy that I didn't stream snipe you there because it was no. Not been yeah. Cool. That's, yeah. That thing. <laughs> Lots, lots of props and respect for that as well. You know, definitely, uh, yeah. lots of opportunity to, st to stream snipe me, and I don't mind like a good stream snipe. Like it's like, oh, he's out there. I'm gonna get like a ship that's you know, I'm not like studying his fucking fit, and I'm like trying to decide what the best is to counter him. I'm just gonna go get my PVP ship that I use to go PVP with, and I'm gonna go out and engage him. That doesn't yeah, I, bother I me have... at all. I have definitely stream site people like Judge Sarn. You know oh yeah, I mean? I've done that I've, before. Oh, Judge is out and about. What system's he in? All right, I'm gonna yeah. go jump into a frigate it's, and it's go follow. It's funny because Judge, he he really dislikes me. Um, oh. I, he, he he always thinks that I have implants, and he says that he looked at my Z kill and saw that I have lots of losses where I had implants, but that's just not it's just not the case. <laughs> like personally, I don't really have a problem with people using. Uh, implants it's like it goes back to that that information is mm -hmm. the only thing that matters in the game it's like you know that guy that... yeah if you want to spend money you know uh isk on uh, uh being uh, a little uh, bit better just let you know you're uh, breaking up really bad well, again I... you're uh you're still breaking up i think a little bit you might be gone now did you die don't die no, the internet is it better now? Oh, uh, I can hear you again. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what's going on with the internet right now. Somebody's ddosing you, man. One of, one of the evil viewers yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. You might, uh, you might be back. Can you try and talk to is me it, again? Is it, is it better now? Oh, I think, I think you're back now. Right they, now. now you're coming in a lot clearer. It's good now. Okay. Yep. That's good. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. It's been happening a lot recently. Whenever I whenever I try to play Eve, it keeps it keeps happening. It's very strange. Yeah, I've I've experienced that as well. Where I've got my entire like just like the last three days, like I've had at least one, you know, drop if not multiple drops uh, for the last three days. But today, actually, I haven't had any any problems, so that's good. I don't know That's though. Good. Eve might be doing some weird stuff to the internet, so you never know. Yeah. Well, let's. Uh, uh, do you have any? Uh, I think that that kind of brings us up to to date with uh, what you've been doing in Eve. Um, before we go, too. do we? I kind of just want to give you a spotlight as well to like talk about anything you're really passionate about in Eve, um, or if there's any projects, or you know, like, do you have a YouTube or? You know, any kind of uh, website or anything that you want to talk about, we we'll definitely open up the floor about that. And uh, also, if you have any shout outs that you uh, want to give to people, but so just kind of give you a little bit of a spotlight to let you talk about what you really care about. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I do have a, a YouTube channel. Um, I could, I guess I could link it on the stream if that, well, no, I, I won't. You can definitely put it in the stream if you want, uh, absolutely. No, and then no, big thing, though, is definitely get it over to me in Discord, and I'll include it in the show notes. So, Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Um, yeah, I mean, I I make videos every now and again. I have this video um, called Why Can't Why Can't We Be Friends, which which shows sometimes when I've been good friends with... Uh, yeah, Why Can't... Yeah, that song's in it, actually. Um, <laughs> that's epic. I love that, man. That's beautiful. That is... Yeah, that's, that's I gotta watch that video. That's, that's definitely what I'm gonna do. Um, 
And yeah, I I have a video about making ISK where I live, um, which actually I'll share my screen real quick and you can see. Oh yeah, is, you can do that. This is, why is it working? I don't know if it's working. I do not see, it might be internet connection, might not be wanting to put through. I think actually it's, might be the, the server, the, like this channel. I don't think I can do it here because uh, it's locked on, it's locked on voice. Okay, let me, uh, I can, I can but edit yeah, that. Basically it's just spinning around rats with an Ishtar being AFK. But, um, yeah, that, that video is actually not open to the public at the moment. It's specifically for, I made it when we were at war with uh, screen wormhole people because we can mine anymore. So all the miners were getting kind of antsy. Um, so I made it for John and we've been kind of distributing it slowly. Um, yeah, shout outs. Main one right now is Garen Willow. If you know who that is, I'll, Sounds I'll link. familiar. He's, He's a really good PV. He's another uh, like solo PVPer, and he just started recently. Um, he has a whole new series coming out on YouTube about. Um, he's basically gonna fly every single ship in the game in a PVP setting um, until it dies. And I actually today I killed his crucifier um, for the next video, so I, I ended that ship streak, which I feel kind of bad about. But yeah, big shout out to him. He's a really nice guy, and he makes awesome videos. Um, also, yeah, to John Revenant, the Harpy, the Harpy King. Uh, I have to give a shout out to him. He's a really good FC. He's a really nice guy. Um, uh, Hen Henrik Suzaku as well. He hasn't played in a long time. I hope he comes back. Um, you know how that goes. Really you you did it. We do it. All do yep. it. You know. You yep. gotta you gotta give a little bit of a Bredo. It's a whole other universe that you're interacting oh, with yeah. all the time, and sometimes you just gotta be like. Oh fuck, man! Two universes is a lot of universes. <laughs> let's uh, let's bring it down to one for a little while. Yeah, it's it's a lot, but that's that's the magic of Eve. I think that he will be back at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope he I hope he does. Um, yeah, he's a great guy. Uh, I'm trying to think. Just in general, I think like a lot of squids get a bad rap just for being squids. Like I'm I'm hoping that I'm kind of breaking the the stereotype <laughs> of. The, the blobbing the blobbing squid or just the AFK plexing squid. Um, oh, you definitely break that stereotype. Kind of, like, um, kind of fight back and it's bit. an unfair stereotype. It's you know every side has their you know botters. You know maybe you know if you don't have proof, but uh, it's so easy to to just kind of AFK or be very inactive, but also doing plexing and then be getting the fuck away. That everybody calls everybody a fucking bot in this game. That's the, the way that it is. If you're if you're not fighting back, then, or well, if you're not fighting back at all, then it's almost obvious. Like you, you, yeah. you were doing the same pattern over and over again, and now you're not shooting at me when I'm shooting at you. That's a little weird. But yeah. even that can be human. Um, it can so be. So I think that the and then the blobbing mentality is like yeah. I mean, we do it all the time, too, and uh, the thing is, is that there are way more Kaldari. Definitely, there's no dispute about it whatsoever. The numbers are on your guys' side, but you also have a lot more new people who have no idea what the fuck they're doing. You have a lot more farmers that the only reason why they're doing Faction Warfare is because of the LP, and yeah. your LP is better. You have access to Jitta, so there's a lot of incentive for people who do not give a fuck about joining up with fleets and actually fighting the Galente, and the only thing that they're looking for is an ISK opportunity. Um, you know, we got, we're playing on hardcore mode, you know, so the <laughs> Galente, all we have are, is heart. Like, our LP fucking sucks. Like, comparatively to what people are willing to pay for LP, Keldari have it fucking made. You guys have, you know, access to Jitta. We've got access to what, Dodixie? I mean, it's true. It's true. Like, that's, I mean, that's that's exactly why I joined Calmo, just because I I want my I need my supermarket access. I need the Walmart, the Walmart uh, discounts. We do have the mom and pop shop that almost has all of your PVP needs at uh, the Hey Dealies HQ though, which is yep. uh, player run, low that's sec, right. and it that is uh, I, I give the Galente a bunch of props for that, especially the network in Hungary because. Um, those guys putting hungry putting up those stations 
Um, like, that was huge. That was really nice to have, like, a home, a, a headquarters. Um, I told them that they should say, uh, that they should turn, they should have named it, because they were asking for names for a long time. They ended up with HQ, which I think is a good name. But I said it should have been the um, Die Less, Buy More. Um, <laughs> a good one <laughs> or or the the die more buy more one of the two you know because <laughs> when i said die less they were like but we want people to die i'm like fine buy more die or die more buy more come on man yeah. um but yeah so i think that there is a stereotype but it's not uh like most on stereotypes it's completely unfair and yeah. uh it's for, for me it's it's mainly both sides think that it's the other side that is blobbing like mm -hmm. everybody in Camel is like, oh yeah, those freaking Camel guys, they always blob me. And then everybody in uh, Galente is like, oh yeah, those freaking squids are always blobbing me. It's like both sides blob each other. That's just how the game. Yeah, works. well, it's like it's you know, like, looking well, over yeah, well, from the hanging and being like, first time, like yeah, <laughs> really? Like, well, that's that's something that I think is kind of annoying. Yeah, and no, I, general, I hate I hate the whining. Toxicity. Yeah, yeah, whining, crying, toxicity, like. I prefer this war over all the other 0, 0.0 because I fucking hated McFix. Like when I was in the Great War and I was part of Interstellar Alcoholic Conglomerate, I fucking hated McFix. I hated Bob with a passion. Um, but there was, you know, actual like space and assets that were being taken and lost and just it was it was a very different kind of feeling and stuff like that. You can't have that here. Um, it just doesn't yeah. work because it's a forever war. I could hate McFix with a passion because a year or two later, that there 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 is no more war and we don't even care about it. You know, I've, I haven't seen a Fix or Mercenary Coalition pilot in forever. Although I did run into like Mercenary Coalition recently, and I'm like, I'm part of an organization now that's uh, even better than your fucking Merc Corp. Because yeah, right. man, they fell apart. But when they were epic, oh. they were epic. That, that's another thing that happened with um, the scary wormhole people. They tried to hire a, a guy called Safe, S A I. Oh, yeah, Safe, yep. They tried to hire Safe to, to gate campus, but the problem with that is that Safe is friends with John. Oh. Like, <laughs> so Safe immediately told John, like, they're trying to freaking hire me. <laughs> and he's wondering what to do. It was, it was, that was hilarious. Um, that's funny as fuck. But yeah. Safe, they were they were really floundering then. Um, is unfortunate but they started it <laughs> awesome yeah so i think we'll go ahead and wrap things on up here thank nice. you so much for coming on this has been super awesome it's uh very rare that we get uh the uh keldari to come over to the federation frontline report um yeah. but i'm uh, always welcome always uh i hope you come back at some point and tell us uh more about the the adventures of <laughs> Yeah, so. I, I hope to be back. It was lots of fun. Um, yeah, it's it's really cool to like to um, do these kind of interview things because I think everybody in Eve, you know, we all have some kind of story. But like, just just thinking back on it, I was I was surprised. Like, just just in the past like thirty minutes or hour, however long this was. Um, An hour like, and thirty thinking, minutes we've been going. Hour and thirty minutes. Jeez. Uh, just Goes thinking about quick. my past. Thinking about my past in this game is kind of fun. Um, oh yeah. Interesting. That's I love the Wayback Machine. That's one of my. It's a really easy conversational thing that you can kind of do with people is talk about the history of of somebody's character, and then I try to throw in a little bit of what connecting history that I might have and stuff like that. And um, it's a good, it's great because you can do it with anybody. It's not you don't have to be the hero of uh, you know One DQ or whatever. You know you don't have to be you know the biggest name in Eve Online. We just had. Uh, somebody who was on that was uh, very, you know, brand new to Eve, started in 2022. And, wow. uh, you know, just doing uh, wormhole stuff and just, you know, learning about mining when, you know, not too long ago, actually, of being like, oh, this is fucking stupid. Oh, but Abyssal is fucking epic. Like, you get your, you know, you can get like this whole story out of somebody that's only been playing for like a year and a half. We were talking for an hour and a half as well, where we were just... Yeah. You know, talk about, you know, what were you passionate about, role-playing, your character, stuff like that. Like, um, my buddy Samson, who does a ton of work, he did uh, help me a lot with the rebranding, where we've got way fucking cooler 
um, you know, logos and stuff for the the corporate or for the corporation and for the the podcast and stuff. Um, our website is back up and running now. We were down for the Federation Frontline dot com was been down for a while now. Um, but uh, actually, I got to check to see if the redirect is working for that. But we've got the Federation Frontline Report now, um, yeah. and so definitely check that out. FederationFrontlineReport.com. Um, you know, it's got our podcast on there, our YouTube, and our Twitch. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more. We've we've had a lot more in the past with the Federation Frontline, but that site went down due to like uh, a plugin that uh, broke, and then. We've been just trying to dig in to see how to easily salvage the thing. But AWS is a real bitch when it comes to you can't just access WordPress um, with the state that it's in uh, for the website being down now. So we've got to go in and SSH into it and find the folder. Um, and just I haven't wanted to go. I haven't had time to dig into it that much. You know, it's like, ah, it's, OK, I'll spend like an hour trying to fix it and being like an hour comes to an end. Oh, I'm tired. I gotta go to bed. I've been doing all this other shit. But in any case, um, so we've got the website up and running. We got tons of new interviews that are going to be going on. Um, we also have the Mad Town Meetup that's going to be happening in Madison, Wisconsin, uh, 2024, May 4th, uh, or sorry, May 3rd. We're going to be drinking until May uh, until May 4th, the strike of midnight. Probably even later that we'll be going for that. Um, so may the fourth be with you as uh, you get you know home to your hotel after drinking at a uh, night out at IO Arcade Bar. Um, so we're gonna do that uh, May third, 5 p.m. or so. We're gonna meet up at uh, the IO Arcade Bar, get drunk, play video games, talk about Eve Online. This is our second year doing this, um, and really looking forward. That's how I met Alec. Um, for the network and now we are part of the network definitely check out Alex's podcast as well um, the declarations of war one of the oldest if not the oldest I believe podcast in all of EVE Online um, they talk about war destruction mayhem events that are going on um, you know definitely you're going to be hearing about fan fest and stuff um, all the new changes that are going to be happening different contracts that Noir um, and the network are in, which now we get to do. So I get paid to do what I do best. And uh, and if I murder people enough, I get a really healthy paycheck for doing that. So, and it's content. So yeah, uh, it's yeah, th- pretty sweet deal. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty fucking sweet, man. Um, and also we were talking about just kind of uh, real quick here. I just want to like, I forgot I wanted to talk about this real quick was just the um, faction warfare is great for new players, but it's also great to build a corporation. Like if you want to get your feet yeah. wet and learning how to build a corporation from the ground up, maybe you and a buddy or even just yourself, find a buddy out there that's, you know, can join up with you and help you build your corporation up like I did with Gwen, um, you know, that's that's the place to be so definitely check that out once again thank you so much for coming on to the show and i like i said i hope to have you back yeah i yeah thanks for thanks for having me it's lots of fun to talk about this stuff awesome well thank you all for watching thank you all for listening if you're just on the podcast and uh have a great night and thank you all for your time